Hello and welcome to EELE 371 Introduction to Microprocessor Hardware and Software. This course is also called Embedded Systems Design more commonly. My name is Brock Lemires and I'll be your instructor this semester. This video is the introduction video for the semester and what I'd like to accomplish is briefly touch about what this course is all about, give a little background on myself, the voice that you'll be hearing throughout the videos, and then go over the, the syllabus with specific uh, attention paid to the course format. We are going to be doing what we call a blended delivery. So there's not going to be a live lecture, but there will be live labs as an open help section. Okay. And then I want to talk about the course materials that you will need for the course to be able to complete this in the blended format, uh, academic policies, and then we'll walk through the Brightspace course and I'll show you where everything is within the system. Okay. So let's start with what this course is all about. Uh, we are looking at embedded computers, uh, but this course is really about learning what a computer is for the first time, okay? So you've probably programmed a computer at this point, and you use computers all the time, but when you think about what it is, you might not know what is underneath the hood. You've probably heard of things like CPU and memory and uh, you know all these sort of stuff, keyboard, mouse, input, output, peripherals, but we haven't really ever looked at the underlying circuitry that sits underneath the, the hardware <clears throat> that allows a computer to work. So this course, what we do is we actually look to understand all of the subsystems that go into making up a computer and how they are used to execute software that we insert into the computer's memory. Now, when you think about a computer, you know, you think about, well, I got a Mac or a, a you know, a Windows machine. Those are pretty complicated computers. Those are called general purpose computers. In order to learn computers for the first time, what we do is we use an embedded computer, which is a, the little tiny computer chips that are in all of the things in your lives that you don't really think about things like household appliances and you know uh, thermostats and motor controllers for your car windows and things like that and the reason we use those to learn about computers is because number one <clears throat> they still are a computer so everything that uh, makes those little computers work is the same as the circuitry that's in the big beefy computers in a windows machine uh, like an Intel i9 or whatever. And so the concepts that you learn on the small computers apply to the more complex computers. So it's kind of difficult to learn computers for the first time when you look at a very complex system. So let's just, we start with a very simple computer. The other thing that is uh, good about looking at the smaller computers is that they, we, we're allowed to actually program them at a super low level. And the low level is called assembly, okay? So you're almost writing ones and zeros that you drop directly into the computer's memory. And this allows us to look at kind of the in-depth operation of how this, this computer actually goes out and gets those, those codes that tell it what to do, bring it over into the CPU, execute it, and then store information to an IO port. And you get a better understanding of what's actually going on underneath the hood. A final reason of why it's important to do that, or it's good to learn the small computers, is because there is a thriving industry surrounding embedded computers, even more so than general purpose computers. For example, uh, there was about 300 million general purpose computers sold uh, last year or the year before, actually 2019. And those are the computers that drive like Windows machines and Mac, MacBooks and all that sort of stuff there were 30 billion embedded computers chips sold, okay? So the number of embedded computer chips in our lives far outnumbers the general purpose workstation laptop style computers. And if you think about it, everything's a computer, right? So it's like the mouse has a computer in it. This microphone I'm talking to has a computer in it. The camera I'm looking at has a computer in it. In my office, there's far more embedded computer chips than there are general purpose computer chips. In fact, I have one Intel computer chip in my office that's driving this computer that I'm recording this on, and I can look around and I can see at least a dozen embedded computer chips. So not only do we learn about a computer, we actually develop a tangible skill that you could be that you could use to get a job. You could be an embedded systems designer. So that's why we learn about it, and it's just flat out awesome. Okay. All right, let's talk about me because I am the voice that you're going to be hearing uh, throughout this course. And let me give you a little background. It's, it's like, you probably say, why, why are you telling me about yourself? And it's like, it's, it's just good to know who the instructor is. Just, they've just shown that it's, it's 
helps you. <laughs> it's, you don't quite have the same learning experience when you are learning from somebody that you've never met before or you don't know anything about. So this is my website and I'm just gonna get, I won't spend long on this, but anyway, uh, I was born and raised in Montana, born in Billings, uh, West High Bear. I actually went to Montana State and got my undergrad in electrical engineering back in the 90s. I uh, went to work for a company called Hewlett Packard in Colorado. And at, I worked there for eight years. And one of the things that they did, which most big companies do, is they'll pay for you to go back and take classes. So I went back to University of Colorado and got my master's degree and my PhD part time while I worked full time uh, at HP. And at HP, I was a hardware design engineer. Okay, so I designed, you know, printed circuit boards and embedded computing systems and embedded code and field program Gatorade designs and stuff like that. So I was a hardware design engineer, but specifically a digital hardware design engineer. So then uh, 15 years ago, I became a professor at Montana State, and I've been here since where my area of expertise or area of interest is embedded systems, okay? So looking at how can you build better embedded computers? How can you build better computers in general? And so if you come over here and you take a look at like uh, my research overview, uh, one of the things I've been doing lately is trying to look at programmable logic and see how you can implement computers that you can change in real time, okay? So we call this reconfigurable computing. And one of the applications that really caught on was about 10 years ago, NASA noticed that uh, you could use this reconfigurable hardware approach to flush out faults that were caused by radiation. And so I started working with NASA on building a radiation tolerant computing technology. And it turned out that it was, it was uh, pretty cool. It actually worked very well. And we've been doing a lot of missions uh, to demonstrate this computer technology. So for example, we've done some, some small satellites, we've built satellites, that are in orbit right now. This is a little satellite about the size of a loaf of bread. This is it being pushed out of the International Space Station. We've done balloon flights. Uh, they actually have two satellites in orbit. And we actually were selected to go to the moon as part of the NASA Artemis program. So in 2023, we're gonna have a, a computer built at MSU sitting on the surface of the moon. Uh, in addition to my research, you know, this is I've, I've also written some textbooks in this area, and one textbook is gonna be the one that we're gonna use, okay? So I, I give you this, uh, <clears throat> this background. If you're interested in any of my <laughs> stuff that I do, you can go out to my website, and I try to list all the main news stories kinda here, and just kinda some highlights of stuff that my research team is doing. And I guess I tell you this because, you know, this is my area of passion, right? So it's like, this is what I chose to study when I was in school. This is, I've, I've worked in industry doing embedded systems design. I do research on embedded systems. I write textbooks on embedded systems. I teach the embedded systems classes. Like this is my jam, right? I love this stuff. And so uh, hopefully you're gonna have as much fun as I am this semester. <laughs> Okay, so now let's take a look at the syllabus. All right, so here's the syllabus, and this is in Brightspace, and I'll show you where you get this in a second. But basically, this is going to give you, you know, your standard syllabus language. So here's a description of what the course is going to be. Here's the learning outcomes that you should be able to do once you're done with this class. Uh, we don't just teach you stuff for no reason. It's, it's always something very specific. It's, we want you to be able to do this. Uh, my contact information, email is, is the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, <clears throat> And I am in the new engineering building. So I'm in Norm Asby Ornson Hall 316C. Uh, we have a teaching assistant for this class. So Stephanie Smith is gonna be uh, a teaching assistant as, a, as well as Derek Priest. And their contact information is on Brightspace. So you're gonna go to that to, get, to find how to contact them. Uh, course format, this is the big key for everything. We are doing what is called blended delivery. And what that means is that some stuff is online, some is live. Now, the reality of this spring 2021 semester is that we are still in the middle of COVID. That means we have to do our classes a certain way. We have to do spread out classes. We have to have social distancing in classes. And so the reality is, is we're not back to full live instruction yet. I hope it will be in the fall, but this semester, no, it's not, <laughs> okay? And so we also have to design the courses so that if we do another campus shutdown like we did last spring, we can continue operation. It's not gonna be a scramble. So what we're gonna do this spring is you are not going to have a live lecture. You are going to watch YouTube videos of me uh, working through the material and showing you examples of how to code stuff. 
that it does have a scheduled time in my info, but it's we're not going to meet like live on a WebEx or a Zoom call or anything like that. You just watch the videos on your own and I give you a schedule on when you should be watching them. So you don't have a live lecture. Okay, big, big deal. All right. The next thing is that we have a lab where you're gonna be doing a lot of coding. You're gonna be doing you know, 20 or 30 small laboratories where you actually program an embedded computer. And all the labs are designed to be conducted remotely. So I offer this class in the summer, I offer it fully online uh, in the summer, in, in some semesters. And if you can do the material uh, it's designed you can do it anywhere you can do this whole thing in a coffee shop okay all you need is a computer and this little embedded computer board and you plug it into a USB connector into your computer and you're off and running so you can do everything remotely if need be however we do have a scheduled lab time each week it's actually from Monday Wednesday Friday from 2 10 to 3 o'clock in Roberts 412 and so instead of having like mandatory attendance what we do is those hours are dedicated for you to be an open help session. So we are gonna have Stephanie and Derek in there all three days and you can drop in if you want and get help. You can work in there every minute that you, of Monday, Wednesday, Friday if you want. You can just use that time, use that space to work on campus or you can never come. It's whatever you whatever works best for you. We have some students that decide I don't need to come to campus I'm just going to do it remotely we have some students that say I want to I'm already on campus I might as well come and work in there just in case I have a question or there's students that just never d do it all on their own then if they have a problem they'll come in in addition to being in the classroom Stephanie and Derek are also going to have WebEx sessions so during this exact same time so when they show up for class they're going to open a WebEx window and they're going to allow anybody who's remote to ask questions okay so you'll find that information in brightspace and so what what we want to get in the habit of is that you registered for this section you registered so i know you're available monday wednesday friday from 2 10 to 3. that's three hours of help that you can get from the two tas and myself uh, and they're there live if you need them they're there online if you need them and those represent the help session times or the equivalent of office hours so we won't be available at any other times other than that we will try to answer email I mean it's not like we're gonna ignore you but you need to get used to using those three hours as like the way that you make progress in this course if you get stuck okay and again it's in Roberts 412 notice it's not a lab it's not like you go in and you need access to a giant oscilloscope and power supplies this lab is designed to be completed with just your laptop okay all right, to support this model, this kind of online with a help session model, you have to have your own computer, okay? There's no way around it. You have to have a laptop that has access to the internet. I don't know if there's a computer that doesn't have access to the internet, but you have to have a computer. Luckily, this is one of the few courses where the engineering software runs on a Mac and also on Linux. Almost everything runs on Windows anymore. If you're still trying to make a Mac work for engineering, I'm gonna enable you for one more semester before you're crushed. Uh, engineering software doesn't run on Macs, okay? This just happens to be one of the few softwares that does run on a Mac, so you're lucky, okay, if you have a Mac. <clears throat> I, I shouldn't say that, you're not lucky. Uh, okay, the other thing you need is a textbook. I wrote a textbook for you, and not only that, I'm gonna give it to you for free as an ebook, okay? So you can download that from the Brightspace page, but if you're gonna buy it, buy it through Amazon. Amazon is way cheaper than the bookstore, don't tell anybody that, and it's way cheaper than any place I've, I've found. And I give you a little link right here, I actually set something up where if you buy it through this link, I get like a penny or something, so I'm gonna, I can make some money <laughs> if you buy it through this link. And so it's called Embedded Systems Design. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, and then you need a portable lab kit. So what we are going to do is you are going to check out this guy right here, the MSP430 microcontroller or embedded computer. This thing right here is going to allow you to do everything that we do in this course and notice that all you need to do is plug it into your computer with a USB connector and it will receive power and you can communicate with the debugger on here and we will write code and we will flash LEDs and interface with buttons and it's gonna be awesome. We do give you a couple other things in the kit that we're gonna check out to you. So it's like a servo motor and a real-time clock and things like that that we'll get to toward the end of the semester. But that's all you need to do the lab. And then finally, everything is gonna be demoed, all your labs, using short videos. 
Okay. And so even if you're in the lab or in the class, you're in Roberts 412 and you're ready to demo a lab, you're going to take a video of your, your demo. Okay. And it might sound stupid because you're sitting there going, well, I could just walk over to Stephanie or Derek and show them. But it turns out that as long as we get in the habit of always demonstrating and turning in our lab assignments with videos and uploading our code, then if you decide you want to work off campus, just go work off campus. The What you turn in is exactly the same as if you were on campus. And that allows us to totally convert online if the campus shuts down, okay? So that's what you gotta do, you gotta have a camera. Everybody has this stuff, okay? We haven't seen a student in years that doesn't have a laptop, uh, the computer's free, or the textbook is free, we're gonna check out the portable lab kit, you gotta give it back though, and everybody has a smartphone, so that's what you do. Prereq 261, probably took it from me. Introduction to logic circuits, that's you gotta know AND gates and OR gates, and we also want you to be who to have programmed in a higher level language like C. So we don't want this to be your first programming experience. So if you've done any type of programming, Python, C, C sharp, whatever, that's good. Okay. If you haven't, get a hold of me so I can figure out if you're going to be able to succeed in this class. We don't want this to just crush you. This is supposed to be a, a really fun class, but you got to have the prereq. Brightspace we'll use for everything. Office hours, I will post office hours on my website, but I'm telling you, use the three hours dedicated to this class. Here's what you're gonna get graded on. We're gonna have a whole bunch of homework, which are multiple choice quizzes. We're gonna have a ton of labs, okay? We're gonna have 60% of your classes, 60% of your grade is the labs. And that's because that's where you show that you understand the material. It's like, I want you doing stuff. And then we're gonna have a final project, which is where you get to choose to do something kind of cool using the stuff you've learned. Grading, I grade straight, 90 and above is an A. I don't give uh, minuses. I do sometimes give a plus if you're like 89.999, but I don't give minuses, I hate minuses. If you get a 91%, you're gonna get an A minus, but if you get a 99%, you don't get an A plus. You can't have minuses without pluses, that's my theory. So I don't give minuses, I hate them. Academic policies, uh, the biggest thing with a, a coding class is this, you can work together for sure. Okay, absolutely everybody can, can collaborate, can ask for help, uh, it, that's what engineering is all about. But every single person has to type in their own program and upload it, okay? So even if you're working in a group of like four or five students and you're all like, how'd you solve this problem? How'd you do that problem? Every single person has to be typing it in for themselves, okay? So that's, and, and you can't like copy somebody else's, you can't turn in anybody else's work, okay? So there's a big difference between plagiarism where you just grab somebody else's file versus collaborating where you're each typing in yourself, but you're kind of like, hey, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? Okay, here's kind of what actions you will be doing. You can read, okay, hopefully. <laughs> so the book, we're, we're gonna cover this book from page one until page 500. We're gonna go through everything sequentially. So you, you, if you're a reader and you don't like videos, you can absolutely make it through this course just by reading. I also have instructional videos, but the videos are really, I wrote the book first, then I made the videos about the book. So it's the material is exactly the same. So whatever mode you like. Then you're gonna have graded components. You're gonna have homework. They're all in the form of multiple choice quizzes that are automatically graded. You get your grade right away. Lab assignments, which are, you're gonna be given an assignment to code. And then you're gonna have a project at the very end. All right, this is no new, this is nothing new. Masks, you gotta wear masks on campus, try to spread out, all that sort of stuff, okay? So that is the overview. But this is where you will always be checking every, I mean, check this every day, the schedule for the week. Here is every single week, the things that you will be doing, okay? So week one, you are going to have, we're going to, I have this thing called module. We're going to be covering course intro. That's what we're doing now. And then we're going to cover chapter one and chapter two, okay? For every single section in the book. So section 1.1, there will be a homework problem. The homeworks are designed to be very short, very quick, as long as you either watch the video or read it. They're just to make sure that you prepared for, you, you actually did the material, you either read or watched the video. It, once you get used to it, it'll be a piece of cake, but this is to avoid you skipping over a section and then trying to do the lab, and then you're just lost on the lab, and we're sitting there going, I don't understand why you don't understand what any of this stuff is. And it's like, well, you, hadn't, you didn't read the book or you didn't watch the videos. So we need you to, to do one of those two things, and we guarantee it 
where we prove that you did it by giving you a multiple choice quiz. Notice how many there are. There are tons and tons of these. Every single section in the book has one of these. But they're not worth a ton of points, right? They're only worth 30% of your grade, and each one is, is worth very, very little. There's a thousand points that are available in the lab, so you can see like five points out of a thousand is 0.5% of your grade. Just a tiny amount, but what the problem is if you get in the habit of not doing these, it builds up and it'll, it'll kill a letter grade. Then you have a lab, okay? Notice that the labs are worth a lot more. That's because they're more important, you know, to be honest with you. And you'll notice that as you get down into like chapters four, we start having like three or four labs per chapter. Uh, and so there's just a lot of labs. So look at all these labs that you have right here. And that's because this course is designed for you to show that you know what's going on. And then we have what we call the project. So there's a 70 point project toward the end of the semester where you actually do something, you define what you're gonna do, and then you do it. And then during the career fair week, this is right around, kind of right where spring break would be, we kind of just slow down a little bit and I have you do uh, some activities related to career fairs or the career fair. So I have you build a resume and upload that. And then I want you to go to the career fair. It's a virtual, so you just log in and kind of poke around. And then we're gonna do an ethics uh, video. So we're gonna have you create a video where we talk about ethical decision-making and engineering and, and just kind of refresh your mind about the importance of ethics, okay? All right, here's the flow of deadlines. Okay, so everything for a week is typically due the following week on Wednesday at 3 p.m., okay? So for example, the activities during week one, notice they're all due on Wednesday of the following week. Why 3 p.m.? Because that's the end of the lab section on Wednesday. So it gives you an all of the week that you're working in, it gives you the weekend, and then if you're still stuck, it gives you Monday and Wednesday of the next week to get help in lab. Try to stay on top of this. Don't get in the habit of saying, oh, week one is due next Wednesday, so I'm gonna wait until Wednesday at two o'clock to work on it. You will be, will be screwed because there's just too much to do. But if you can get in the habit of opening this up on a Monday and say, okay, what are we doing for the week? I'm gonna chip away. I even give you recommendations on which days to do it. So just stay on top of it and it will become, it will become a pattern and it won't be that big of a deal. The students that have trouble in this class, they just wait and they try to build up all this stuff until five minutes before the deadline. And then they try to get in there and think they're gonna get their points by doing the multiple choice quizzes. The quizzes aren't worth anything. It's all the labs. You get the quizzes allow you to prepare to do the labs. The only exception to this, there's a, two exceptions to this. Number one, during the first week, you have an assignment that's due Wednesday at three. You are gonna come to lab on Monday. We will talk live and then we will go check you out your kit. But I want every single person during the first three days of class to be able to log into Brightspace, make sure you can access this course and do the first quiz, which is 1.1. It's very simple. You're gonna, it's gonna prove to me that you know how to log in, you know where to find the book, you know where to find the videos, and you know where to find the quizzes, okay? So that's the only one on here. Nothing late can be turned in because everything's so simple, okay? So if, if you're late, you're, something's going wrong, with the exception of COVID. So if you have COVID, you know, you 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 don't have to tell me. You can. There's some law that says you don't have to tell me that you have COVID. But anyway, if you're sick, let me know and we can make accommodations. But I don't want to make accommodations for people that just forgot to do the assignments. Okay. All right. The only other thing is toward the end, we're I allow you to do the final project. I allow that to be due on Friday at 3 p.m. April 23rd. And if you look at the schedule, you'll notice that finals week is the week after this. So that's week 16 of the semester. We're gonna be done with this course on the Friday before final. So there's no final exam. We're gonna be doing the final project the two weeks leading up to final exams. And that should allow you to have time for your other courses, okay? So that is the syllabus. I'm telling you, this schedule right here is your buddy. This is how you're gonna know what you're supposed to be working on, what is graded, what is due, and when it's due, okay? So this should be <laughs> this is important. Okay, the last thing is to go over Brightspace. So every everything you're probably used to Brightspace by now, ecat.montana.edu. And when you log in, you're gonna see your courses down here. So you'll see microprocessor, hardware and software systems. And if you click on that, <clears throat> you will come to the launch page for our course. And I put an announcement here just to show you the book coverage, just so you know where you're at, uh, that you know you're in the right place. 
And what I do is I organize everything by content pages. So if you come, I give you this welcome and you can click right here in order to go to the course info page, but I'll show you where that page is. If you come over here and click on content, this is everything that you need. So notice that I have a course information and syllabus and then I have module one, two, all the way to 13, <clears throat> uh, actually to 15. And in here I also have midterm projects and I have final project. So each module corresponds to a chapter in the textbook. They're not all equal, right? So module one is like two pages, okay? Whereas module 14 is like 100 pages, right? Okay, so let's take a look at course information and syllabus and see what that is. So this is basically everything that we kind of talked about. Uh, the course syllabus is right here, so you can click on that syllabus and that'll give you, bring you to the schedule. Course overview video link will be right here when I'm done. And then here's contact information. So here's me, obviously, uh, Stephanie and Derek. And here's what's really important. Notice that they both have their WebEx information right here. So if you are off campus during the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two to three lab session, the open help session, and you're like, I need help. You can say, I'm gonna grab Derek here. I'll click on this and enter his meeting number and password, and then just hang out there. So he, Derek might be helping somebody else in class, and then all of a sudden he sees you're on there and he'll jump on and help you, okay? So that's how we're gonna handle this. So they're gonna be on during those Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two to three times, okay? Here's the material again, as we stated, but here's the download to the book. Okay, so this book right here, if you download this, I mean, you probably will, uh, you get a big old PDF of this book I wrote. Okay, and here it is. I mean, it's, it, you gotta admit, it's pretty awesome. Look at that, look at that cover. <laughs> so, th I mean, this is a real book, it's published. It's like a real thing, okay? <clears throat> and it's it's huge, right? It's like ever, all these examples and stuff in there. And so you can have that book, but if you're old, you know, you're like, I, I want a hardcover book. I give you this link right here. Go ahead and click that little buddy right there. It takes you to Amazon, and this is my, there's, I don't know what I am, something, some associate where if you buy this using this link, then I get some commission. And it's not a lot, uh, but you know, buy a book. Buy, buy 100 books. <laughs> anyway, so this is what a content page looks like. And now let's take a look at module one. So if I come back to content, here's like what a typical module is gonna look like. Module one. <clears throat> okay, so you're gonna have all, it's always the same thing. It's the name of the chapter, then I have learning outcomes, and then you have your activities. And every section has kind of the same thing. It's gonna be like read the section one or watch 1.1. Okay, so if you click on this video, you're gonna get this. Need a oh, an ad. I created one for our startup using Wix. Let me show you how I did. Hi, this is Brock Lemire, author of... And there I am. Okay, so you watch that video, and, you know, it's, it's just what you would think. It's me talking over slides, but later on I get into stuff where I'm like coding and showing you my board. And so that's what this course is gonna be like. You're gonna be watching videos of me, and there you go. We then have a homework assignment. So if I click do homework 1.1, it's gonna bring me to a multiple choice quiz and you will, mine looks a little bit different than you, but let me let me show you. I mean, you've seen a multiple choice quiz. This isn't anything magic, but it's like, here you are. Go classify the computer as an embedded or general purpose, embedded. And you get down here and you go ahead and just hit submit and then you get your grade. Okay, so that's what most, that's what every one of these multiple choice quizzes is gonna look like. But the key to it is that I link everything on these pages. So even though it's a quiz, you don't have to go to the quizzes to find it. If you wanna go to the quizzes and look at how many quizzes there are, you can. Uh, but when you, and then like for lab, you're gonna have a lab description, which is a handout. Then you're gonna upload it to the lab 1.1 assignment folder. That's the assignment folders up here, but I link it here for you. So if you, you should get in a, a habit of using the links here because everything is on there. The first lab is gonna be to install the software called Code Composer Studio for this little embedded computer board. And I give you a link right here on how to download it or where to download it. But so that's like a normal content page. Module two is a big one, except that it's all review. So you should have taken a logic circuits class before you took this one. So uh, this is about, you know, number systems, combination logic, sequential logic, memory. This is a review. Now this is in the book and it is, there are videos linked here, but you should be able to open up this homework and plunk in answers and just see what you remember and what you don't, okay? So hopefully this is nothing more than a review. So don't get overwhelmed by module two. It's supposed to be a review. 
Uh, and then you go on to module three and it starts kind of looking like what you would expect. Section three, one, watch a video, read the, vi read the book, do a homework. R read, watch, homework. Read, watch, homework. Get into module four, you start seeing kind of the similar thing. Read, watch, homework. Module five is where we start getting into more labs. Okay, so now you start seeing a lab pop in here. And now you get into module six, you see more labs. So then it's like, oh man, there's a lab here, it's 6.1. Then you have 6.2, then you have 6.3. So the labs become more and more of, of a component of this course as you move along. In terms of deadlines, if I come in here and I click on this, this homework and I wanna do it and I wanna know when is it due, well, it's gonna be due the following Wednesday per the syllabus. So that's where you look here and you go, when is this thing due? I go to module six, six or where is it? 6.1, it's due Wednesday, February 3rd, 3 p.m. The good thing about homeworks is that up until the deadline, you can open them, enter answers, and save them. And, and it won't submit it, and you have until the deadline to submit it. So it's not like they're timed or anything like that. You can open them up and just enter questions and then save it and then log out and then repeat it again. If you come into quizzes, you'll see all the homework quizzes. It's almost like scary when you first see it because you think, oh my gosh, look at all these homework quizzes. But it's it's because we they're really simple ones after each section. Same thing with assignment folders. If you look at this, you can see all the labs that you're gonna upload and it's like, it looks a little overwhelming, but it's you just chip away at it, chip away at it. And the way your grades work is that you basically build points up. So as you turn stuff in, you'll see instead of being zero out of a thousand, you'll be two out of a thousand, then 10 out of a thousand. And you just work until you get enough points for your A and then you're done with the class. Okay, that is it. That is the class for this semester. Embedded systems design is what I'll be calling it from here on out. I look forward to working with you even though I'm not going to see you in class other than the first day. You should come to class on Monday, January 11th in order to get a quick intro and then check out your kit because you're gonna to wanna to start installing your software right away. But even though I'm not gonna be seeing you very much live, you'll, get, you'll be sick of me by the time you get done with a thousand YouTube videos, but I am here. So email me, email Stephanie, email Derek. It, the best way to do it is to always email all three of us when you have a question, and then one of us will get back to you within 24 hours is our goal, okay? All right, that is it, and good luck this semester.